Daddy. That's one. Here's number two. There's three and four. I'll get them. for polar bears. For what? Polar bears. This is an igloo, isn't it, Lassie? I thought it was our Texas jailhouse. Not anymore. I want them to get used to snow. Snow? Sure. But he'll be our leader. Leader of what? The dog team. Huh? Get it all figured out, Boomer. We'll fix that old sled and make a harness. It's kind of a long time to winter, isn't it? Well, they need time to grow up. I mean, can you keep all of the puppies that long? All of them? I'll have to, so as not to break up the dog team. Won't they eat an awful lot? They're gonna eat each other chub. That one will be a watchdog. And that one will go get the cows. <laughs> And this one, he'll chase the chickens out of Mom's flowers. What'll Lassie do? Have more puppies. <laughs> It'll get kind of crowded, won't it? And what do your folks say? Grown-ups mostly want to get rid of things like puppies. I don't let anybody talk about it. Besides, they're going to earn their keep. In the summertime, they'll pull a wagon. What kind of a wagon? Like hauling hay and alfalfa. And when your folks see that, they'll really let you keep all of them. Just think, Boomer, and snowstorms will come mushing up to school. Yeah, in fur hats. Let's start our business right now. We're still too young to put harnesses on. Yeah, but we could advertise. Yeah, we could make a sign. Take them home, Les. Take them back to the barn. Go on now. stuff written on it already. But there's some more here. Collie pups for sale. Just a real old sign that somebody made a long time ago. Oh, yes, Fred. Of course. A female. Yeah, we'll try to save one of the puppies for you, all right. Oh, there'd be nothing like a collie for hurting those sheep of yours around. Paul, 
If that's Mr. McCullum and he's thinking about a mail... Huh? Oh, sure, sure. You can come around and see him anytime, Fred. No, here's a card from Uncle Petrie. And he says his cousin wants a mail. Fine. Goodbye. Female. Oh, it's lucky you didn't put out that sign. There are already so many people have called asking about Lassie's pups. Paul. Timmy. I think I'll go home. I've tried to tell you about this for weeks, but you wouldn't listen. They're our puppies. I'm sorry you found this sign. Last night, I even talked about it in front of you. Didn't you hear me? Lassie had them for me. Yes, of course. You've taken wonderful care of them, but the puppies grow up. Mr. McCollum wants to make a real sheepdog out of one of them, Timmy. He thinks that a puppy of Lassie's might even win the sheep trials for him someday. Well, nobody's been promised anything definite. You better listen to what your mother says, son. Timmy, when people have children, you wouldn't expect them to stay home for the rest of their lives, would you? But this is different. People don't pull sleds. Sleds? I've got it all figured out, Mom. Oh, Timmy, even Lassie wouldn't want to keep her pups when they're grown up. She knows that each of them must have a master of its own. Besides, we only need one dog. Lassie's so wonderful. Oh, don't you think that... We should let other people have wonderful dogs, too. Paul? Hello? Yes? Who? Other people don't need puppies like I do. Oh, yes, Mrs. Johnson. Um, well, Dr. Weaver did mention something about it, but uh, now isn't a very good time. Well, all he said was that you were anxious to find a puppy as a playmate for your child. Playmate? Oh, oh I understand. Well, all right, then. Um, I'll give you the directions to find our place. I wish nobody knew there were even any puppies. All right, then. I wish I could hide them in a real igloo. All right, then. Goodbye. Well, nobody could find them but us. Timmy, come on, let's go inside. We'll have a piece of cake and talk it over. Only be a minute, Jerry. Hello. 
so. Mrs. Martin? Yes, you must be Mrs. Johnston. Yes, I hope I haven't inconvenienced you any. As I told you, I'm taking some things to my aunt over in Calverton. Jerry's so excited about seeing the puppies. Oh, of course, I understand. Uh, actually, they belong to my son, Timmy. They're Lassie's. Lassie's my dog. Oh, I see. Hello, Timmy. That's Jerry over there in the front seat. Hi. Um, actually, we haven't decided which of the puppies are going to be available. There have been so many people here in our own neighborhood asking about them. Like big ranches. They need dogs to protect their sheep from the wolves. But I just want a dog to play with. Maybe you better stay in the car, son, if the Martins haven't decided about selling them yet. What's the matter with your leg? Haven't you ever seen a brace before? Mother? Are we going to see the puppies at all? The doctor says the more exercise, the better. That's why we're so anxious to have a puppy. It would be good for him to run and play with. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to see them. Well, why don't you leave Jerry here with me while you run your errands? Well, that's a good idea. You want to see them, too. Oh, of course. Then you can show the puppies to your mother yourself when she gets back. Come on, Jerry, this way. <laughs> There's seven of them, and I bet you can't tell them apart. The last you can. Well, girl, where are your puppies? Hi, Lassie. You like dogs, don't you? I sure do. Hey, Timmy, you know, you ought to keep this gate closed. I do, Mom. Lassie shuts it herself, and I forget. They're not out here. None of them. Where are your puppies, Lassie? The puppies? Well, no, I've been out in the orchard. Oh, uh, this is Jerry Johnston. And he's come here to see the puppies. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Now you tell me where they are. Now tell me. Oh, if the pups got away, Lassie will find them, won't you, girl? No, she won't. See? He just does that. Now go get him, girl. Go on. Someplace. Why? I didn't tell her to. far off. Surely they wouldn't go beyond the fence. Why don't we all uh, just scatter out? 
He's all right, but it was a close call. Are there any more out there? No, not that way. Where are they? Where can they go so fast? Well, we better find out in a hurry, son. Come on, now. That's a good idea, Jerry. Say, there's a couple of clean flower sacks over there. You could use them to dry that wet puppy off. Hope you find them, Mr. Martin. <laughs> She went down the lane. I think she picked up a trail. Well, come on, we'll follow her. for dinner, huh? Oh, you're still not Blacktail, are you? He's the only one that's left.
It's my fault. It's all my fault. Shh, there. Now, we don't know yet. Sometimes people stop their cars and steal puppies. Now, don't worry. Lassie will find him. Look at her. I think she found something. Well, at least there's nowhere in there where a puppy can get hurt. Let's go. Still now, hold them still. Anyway, I lined him up so I could see which one he wanted. You can untie him now. What? You want one, don't you? Sure I do. Hey, mother! Mother! Timmy said I could have a puppy, didn't you? Sure. I decided there's some people that just, just need puppies. But what about our dog team? Now, which one? Which one do you want to take? Wow. I just don't know. This one's nice. Maybe he'd be good for herding Mr. McCollum's sheep. You mean you're going to give them all away? Sure. There's lots of people who want puppies. Here, how about this one? But that's Blacktail. He's a beauty. Isn't he your favorite? You're all my favorites. And he needs somebody to look after him. You can do it all right. Puppies need people, don't they, Lassie? Somebody of their very own. Everybody knows that. tonight. There's a wild tiger on the prowl. A man-eater. But you don't have to worry. Me and Captain Martin will protect you. We're gonna find that tiger before he eats any more natives. Yes, 
that's one tiger that won't give us any more trouble. Get up, Mike. You're not the tiger. Come on, girl. You can get up, too. About. Hi, bud. What are you kids doing? We're playing safari, like we saw in the movie. We're in darkest Africa, and I just shot a man-eating tiger. <coughs> What's in there? Provisions. What kind of provisions? Oh, well, you know the stuff you take on a safari, like dried buffalo steaks and... to keep from starving. Let's see. Trade for it. What have you got? A slingshot. Watch. That's pretty good. Well, how about it? You want a trade? It's a pretty big candy bar, Boomer. Yeah. And besides, what would we need with a slingshot? You know, they never did catch that guy that robbed the bank in Capital City. What if you run into him? You'll need this for protection. Last is all the protection we need. Aren't you, girl? <laughs> we got Mike, too. Some protection he'd be. No, say I didn't warn you. Besides, I just remember this is a high-powered elephant gun. I never heard of a real safari going to anywhere without an elephant gun. Think we need an elephant gun, Boomer? Well, they are pretty important, especially if you meet up with any wild elephants. I'm not very hungry anyway. Are you? No. Should we trade? Sure. if you keep closing your eyes. Here, try again. Okay. Mr. Brody's window. Yeah. Boy, I'll bet he'll be mad. But that isn't Mr. Brody. I heard my mom say Mr. Brody had a new hired hand. That must be him. All right, boys, come on over here. Come on up. boys can't hit what you're aiming at. I'm sorry. I wasn't aiming at the window, honest. Well, there's no great harm done. I can probably fix it before old man Brody comes back. He'll never know the difference. Gee, mister, would you really do that? Sure, if I can find a piece of glass that'll fit it. Gee, it's a mighty fine dog you got there. The big one's not mine. Her name's Lassie. Well, how do you do, Lassie? <laughs> the other one's Mike. He's my dog. Hey, Mike. I'm Case Ferguson. Old man Brody put me on a few weeks ago. I'm Jimmy Martin, and this is my best friend, Boomer Bates. Mighty happy to know both of you. Shouldn't we tell Mr. Brody that we broke his window? Nah, he just gets sore. You boys run on home. Forget about it. Yeah, thanks, Case. Come on, Jimmy. Timmy, let's get out of here before Mr. Brody gets home. I think we should have waited and told him. Why? 
because I think it's right. I'll tell Dad about it. What do you want to do that for? Because I think it's the right thing to do. Don't you, girl? <laughs> to go home and forget it. His name's Case. He's Mr. Brody's new hired hand. He said he'd fix it, so I don't see why we have to worry about it anymore. Now, that's not the point, Boomer. It was Mr. Brody's property that was damaged. It was nice of uh, Case to offer, but there's no reason why he or Mr. Brody should have to buy a new pane of glass. And another thing, boys, a slingshot like this is not a toy. It's an honest-to-goodness weapon. It's dangerous. Oh, don't look so glum. I'm mighty proud you came and told me about it, Timmy. Thanks, Dad. We have to go and tell Mr. Brody we did it. Come on, Boomer. Oh, all right. Come on, Mike. You know, I used to be pretty good with one of these things. I guess every boy thinks that they're fun to use, but they're dangerous. I certainly don't want my son to use one. He won't, dear. I thought I could fix it before you got back, Mr. Brody, but with one thing and another, I didn't get around to it. And this is the rock that did it, huh? I guess so. It looks something like that one. Well, when I was a lad, it was the doer that paid for the deed. Yes, sir. Well, what does that mean? That means I think you should pay for your mischief. But it wasn't supposed to be mischief. Honest, Mr. Brody. Well, whether it was or it wasn't, I think you should be made to work it out. I'll be leaving for town in a couple of minutes, Case. We'll go over that supply list when I get back. Yes. Come inside, fellas. I want you to notice these rocks. You'll notice they're different colors, different structures, different... Hmm? Different what, sir? <laughs> well, now look at this one. This looks like it's made up of a lot of little pebbles, all pasted together. And this one, that looks real smooth, like a piece of paper. Now, you fill the sacks with rocks like these, and I'll consider your debt is paid. I'll go along with you. There's a sack for you and a sack for you. There you are. Go along. It's almost full. <laughs> We've got to do better than this, boy. Go find us a rock. I wonder what Mr. Brody wants with a bunch of old rocks, anyway. Search me. And what do you want to lift that rock for? Maybe he liked the way they taste. What's it taste like, Timmy? Like a rock. Why don't you pick on a rock your own size? You told him to find a rock, and he did. <laughs> That's enough of that, boy. We've got work to do. I sure wish we hadn't traded our candy bar to Freddy. Me too. It would have tasted better than any old rock, I bet. Yeah, and we wouldn't have broken that window, and we wouldn't have been out here looking for stupid stones. Well, let's hurry up and get done. Okay. Come on, Mike. We can't go home yet. You can't fill a sack with one rock. I don't care how big it is. Come on, Lassie. Girl. 
look what Lassie found. What are they? An old hat and a red bandana. I thought she was supposed to be digging for rocks. Yeah. Come on, girl. Look, look at this. Capital City National Bank. Timmy, this is a money bag. Like they use in banks to put money in? And then they put it in an armored car and drive it away someplace. But where did Mr. Brody get them? Timmy, Mr. Brody's a bank robber. How do you know? I remember my dad reading in the paper that the robber who held up the bank wore a red bandana and an old hat. Gosh. You know what this is? This is evidence. We better take it to Sheriff Miller. Let's go tell Case, and he can call the sheriff. Golly, Boomer, we'll be really heroes. And when we saw that, we knew right away that Mr. Brody was the bank robber, didn't we, Timmy? Sure did. Well, it uh, certainly looked like you got the evidence here, all right? See, I told you. We better call off Sheriff Miller so he can get out here right away. No. Come to think of it, we'd better drive into town with the evidence and give it to Sheriff Miller in person. Well, I guess so. But I'll have to call Mom so she'll know where I am. Better than that, Timmy, we'll stop by your place on the way. Now, we better hurry. Old man Brody may come back. I'll take care of these. You boys jump on the truck. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. Elephant Hunter's back already? Well, where's Timmy and Boomer, girl? Paul, I'm a little uneasy about the boys. I'll call Mr. Brody and find out what's going on. Jenny? This is Paul Martin. Would you ring the Brody farm, please? Uh, we'll ring a few more times, Jenny, would you please? No answer? No, he's probably out at the barn or someplace. Uh, no, that's all right, Jenny. Thanks anyway. Goodbye. We're gonna drive over to the Brodies. Case? Sure it is. I'm taking a new shortcut. Oh. I 
don't see them, Paul. I'll look around. Oh, here comes somebody. Hi, Mr. Brody. Hi, Mr. Martin. Hello. Mr. Martin. Oh, Mr. Brody, Mr. Martin. we came over because we were a little concerned about Timmy and Boomer. Well, I hope you folks won't be upset, but I gave them a job to do to repay me for breaking my window. Oh, what sort of a job? Well, you see, Mrs. Martin, I'm a rock hound, and I, uh... Well, <laughs> you know, I, I collect rocks and all that sort of thing. Say, that's a hobby I'd like to try. You know, honey, collecting rocks and then making bookends and rings and things like that. Oh, that sounds interesting. Um, what kind of a job did you give them, Mr. Brody? Well, I told them that they filled a couple of sacks with rocks, certain kinds of rocks. I'd uh, call it square for the debt. Well, that sounds fair enough. Sacks? Uh, well, you know, little money sacks. I got a real bargain on those sacks, too, from a bank over in Capital City. They're a little worn, but uh, they come in mighty handy for collecting rock specimens. Uh, come on to the shed and I'll show you. Oh, it's all right, girl. Here's the cutter and polisher I put together, Mr. Martin. Well, that doesn't look too complicated. No, and uh, it's not expensive either. Here, I'll, I'll show you a little trick. This is a sample of rainbow obsidian. You see where I wet it there? It'll give you a fair idea what it looks like when it's all polished up. Say, how about that? You see that, Ruth? Yes, I'm sure it's very pretty. Huh? I'll uh, try to find some work that's all finished so you can see that. Oh, that's funny. What is it, Mr. Brody? Well, these sacks I gave to the boys. They're almost full. Well, then Timmy and Boomer came back. Now, how in thunder did that happen? Capital City National Bank. What does it mean, Paul? I don't know. I think I'd better notify the sheriff. Excuse me. What's wrong? Well, Sheriff Miller said finding the money hidden here means there's a good chance it was Case who held up the bank. The boys are probably with him. Oh, Paul. Well, they can't have gone far. Well, the only road they could have taken was the old river road, at least till they get to the main highway. The sheriff will try to hit them off there. Looks like Lassie had more sense than we did. Oh, well, go in my car. It's headed in the right direction. <laughs>
bastard dog get here? Did you hear that? Sounded like a shot. Oh, if I ever lay my hands on that man. to sheriff. Well, it was certainly nice of Mr. Brody to give you these bookends, Timmy. I guess Mr. Brody's all right after all, but he isn't very smart. Why, Timmy? You know what he thinks? He thinks Lassie's a rock hound, and everybody knows she's a collie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Timmy. We shouldn't have laughed. What Mr. Brody means, dear, is that Lassie's good at collecting rocks. And anybody who has that as their hobby is called a rock hound. Oh. In that case, girl, I guess you're a rock hound. But most of all, you're the smartest dog in the world. Because you knew Case was the bank robber. <laughs> Nothing to hold you up? There were no birds to watch and no lizards to catch? Where's Lassie? She's out chasing a rabbit. <laughs> well, at least one of you's running through to form. Here she is now. Lassie, I understand you prefer rabbits to dog biscuits. She doesn't eat rabbits, Mom. She just chases them. <laughs> oh, I know. You wouldn't hurt a little old rabbit now, would you? There you are. Now you're both taken care of. Well, I've never seen her do that before. Maybe she's going to bury the biscuit like she does bones. <laughs> Almost worn out. I meant to get you some new shoelaces. I could have asked Dad to pick some up today when he went into town with Uncle Petrie. There you are. Here's Lassie now. What's the matter, girl? You've already had your biscuit. And you ought to know better to beg. It's not polite. I think she is burying those things. She's saving them all for a rainy day. Let's give her another one, Mom, and we'll see. All right, if you insist, young lady. I won't follow her too close. I don't want to embarrass her. Oh, I see. Lá 
Perhaps she was playing with those biscuits. What? Burying them for a rainy day? No, she was giving them to a friend. A friend? A dog friend. About so high, and he'd floppy ears and yellow fur. Real fuzzy, I'll bet. With a shaggy tail, with a spot over one eye. How'd you know? Isn't he cute, Mom? <laughs> oh, yes, I say Lassie thinks so, too. Hold the door open for me, will you, while we take these clothes in? Okay. <laughs> as though he was starving. Lassie knew he was hungry. That's why she gave him her biscuits. Oh, he knows a soft touch when he sees one. He'll be Lassie's friend for life. If Lassie's my dog, why couldn't he be Lassie's dog? We can name him Spot. Like that name, girl? <laughs> well, I think Spot's a good name for him, Timmy, but uh, don't you think that one dog is enough around the place? But, Mom, he's too little to be left all alone in the woods. The wolves might get him, or the hawks, or even... All right, all right, all of you. We'll keep Spot. But only until we find a good home for him. Okay? How about it, Lassie? Mom will find Spot a good home, and then he'll be happy. Oh, yes, I'm sure he will. All right, I'll phone Doc Weaver and see if he knows of someone. Boomer might, too. Well, now that's settled. Timmy? Why don't you take your dog, and Lassie, you can take your dog, and why don't you all run out and play for a while? Okay. Come on, Lassie. Come on, Spot. Come on. If we're going to catch pollywogs, you got to sneak up on them. <laughs> get so dirty. Just look at his mane. Let's take him home, Lassie. Maybe Mom can find out who he belongs to. belongs to somebody. Oh, it certainly is a beautiful animal. What's the matter with Spot? Maybe he doesn't like horses. Well, I, um, I guess you better put him in the barn till Dad and Uncle Petrie get back. They'll know what to do with him. Come on, Lassie.
you are, Lassie. Now we'll get him cleaned up pretty. so late. I was beginning to wonder. Well, we stopped over near Cal Humphrey's place to give a fellow a hand. He had a flat tire. Oh? First time I ever changed tires on a horse trailer before. A horse trailer? You know, one of those fancy outfits they used to carry horses in. He said he got the horse out so he could jack the trailer up and the crazy critter got away from him. Well, if you're, uh, if you're looking for a stray animal, you've certainly come to the right place. What do you mean? I well, supposing you follow me and see for yourselves. Hi, Dad, Uncle Petrie. Doesn't he look swell, Mom? Will somebody tell me how that horse managed to get in here? Oh, don't ask me. Ask Lassie. And what is that? He's bought. It's another of Lassie's friends. He doesn't like horses. That's why he stays out there. <laughs> I see. Oh, say, Paul, maybe you better call Humphreys right away. That Kramer fella might still be there looking around for his horse. All right, I will. Um, you better put him in the stall, Timmy. Okay, Dad. Yeah. Sure is a mighty handsome animal, all right. No wonder that poor fella was upset. Cal, this is Paul Martin. Is that fellow with the horse trailer still down in your lane? Well, uh, tell him we found his horse. Yeah, he's right here in our barn. Well, don't ask me. Ruth tells me that Lassie found him. you people for all your help. First fixing my trailer, now catching my horse for me. Well, actually, finding your horse wasn't much of a problem, Mr. Kramer. Well, catching stray seems to be the least of our problems. Oh, yeah. this is my wife, Ruth. Oh, I'm happy to meet you, Mrs. Martin. I only hope Monarch hasn't caused you any trouble. Monarch? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> That's good. He's very high strung. As a matter of fact, there are times when he's just downright dangerous. Dangerous? Oh, Paul. Miss Martin, you better not go in there. You just let me handle him, hmm? I think you all better stand well back. I wouldn't want anybody getting hurt. Is that your boy? That's right. Please, son. Son, get away from that horse. Now, be very careful and don't excite him. But I haven't finished combing his mane. Tell your boy to do just what I say. Timmy, you heard Mr. Kramer. But I don't understand, Mom. Did I do something wrong? I only wanted to make him look pretty. I know, son, but uh, Mr. Kramer tells us that Monarch can be pretty wild at times. But he's gentle. And we're all good friends, aren't we, Lassie? <laughs> Timmy, please. Mr. Kramer knows his horse a lot better than we do. Well... Okay. I guess you better come away too, Lassie. Now, please stand back. Oh. Steady, boy. Steady, boy. Steady, boy. Oh, boy. Steady, boy. Steady, boy. Steady, boy. Gosh, Lassie. 
What's the matter with him? He never acted like that before. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Lassie! Get that dog out of here. He'll kill her. Oh boy. Oh boy. Steady, fella. Steady. friends, but nobody would believe me. Go on, Lassie. Take Monarch into the trailer. Go on. I hadn't stood right here and seen it with my own eyes. I... Well, I still can't believe it. I couldn't believe it when I saw your horse acting so wildly. He's been as gentle as a kitten all afternoon. Yep. Looks like all your horse has been needing, mister, is a stable mate. <laughs> Look, Mr. Martin, you name your own price. I don't care what she costs. I've got to have that dog. Well, in the first place, Mr. Kramer, Lassie isn't mine to sell. She belongs to my son. Did you hear what I said, Timmy? give you anything you want for your dog. You see, Monarch's disposition is his worst enemy. Now, if he could go to the post quiet and rested, I don't think there'd be a race that he couldn't win. I know what you mean, Mr. Kramer. But I couldn't sell Lassie. What Timmy's trying to say is that Lassie's like part of the family. Don't think there's anything in the world you could offer that make him part with her. I understand. Well, thanks anyway for all that you have done. We'll at least be able to make the meet in time. I sure hope you win. So do I, Timmy. Steady, boy. Easy, fella. Thanks again. Bye. <laughs> that dog's a bottomless pit. All he wants to do is eat. And such a half pint, too. Must be all stomach. Well, that's our ring. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Kramer. Where? Before we ever got to Calverton. That crazy horse kicked down the tailgate, and while I'm out putting it up, he breaks loose again. I see. And well, sure, Mr. Kramer, if we hear of anything. I'll be here at the Calverton Inn for a while anyway. Sure. Good night, Mr. Kramer. Did something happen to Monarch? Mm-hmm. Broke loose again. They didn't even get as far as Calverton. <laughs> Maybe we ought to take Lassie and look for him. Oh, no, now. That's enough excitement for today. I think if you want to do something, you'd better take Lassie and go on and get ready for bed. Right away, Mom. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take care of Spot. Whoa, now. Isn't Spot supposed to be Lassie's dog? Yes. Well, then maybe Lassie should take care of him. Um, okay. Come on, Lassie. Better locate a home for that pup soon, before he decides that he should have a dog of his own. <laughs>
Almost as bad. He's back. That crazy critter's back. What happened? What critter? The monarch. He's in the barn. Darn near killed me. Now, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing to do is call Mr. Kramer. He's staying at the Calverton Inn. Well, then I'll do it. What's happening, Mom? Ask your Uncle Petrie. Mom said to ask you what it's all about, Uncle Petrie. Well, Monarch's back, and Uncle Petrie's got him trapped in the barn. Yeah, better than him trapping me. <laughs> I'm no stable mate for a horse. What's a stable mate, Dad? Well, a stable mate is sort of a pet, like Lassie is to you. Like Spot is to Lassie. Then why couldn't Spot be Monarch's pet? Well, now, that's sure an idea. That horse likes dogs. Yeah, but can you get that dog to like horses? <laughs> hey, where is Spot? Where's Spot, Lassie? He wasn't in my room this morning. Oh, maybe he ran away. Gosh, just when he might have a home. And then you'll leave right away. Good. All right, fine. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, now, what do you want? Oh, I know. You're hungry. Well, come on, come on. He can smell that biscuit a mile off. She wants in. He's all yours, girl. What do you think of that? He sure likes to eat. Yep. Looks like Lassie's got the answer. <laughs> ah, hi. 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 Well, this is getting to be a habit, isn't it? I wonder how long I'll be able to hold him this time. Oh, I don't think you'll have any more trouble. Oh, it won't? What do you mean? Yeah. Take a look. And if you'd like to give him a good home, he's yours. For free. Hey, that little fella's gonna live like a king. As long as your horse keeps winning, you could go broke trying to feed that dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Well, again, I can't thank you folks enough for all you've done. You see, Spot was Lassie's dog. But she gave him the monarch. Because she knew he needed a stable mate. <laughs>